All right, we'll finish up chapter two in the next couple of videos with um, inverse functions. Before we can get into inverse, we need to make a, one more definition and then we'll do inverses in the next video. Um, but the definition is one to one. So a function is one to one if each number in the range of f of x, which means each y value, is associated with exactly one number in the domain. So that means each y value has exactly one x value in a less formal definition. Um, it has to already be a function. It's just a special type of function. Um, and then just like we did a vertical line test for functions, we're going to do the same concept but a horizontal line test for one to one. So we're going to draw a horizontal line. And if it goes through at most one point, then it's one to one. So let's check two of them out. So let's look at um, f of x equals x squared. We know what that looks like. It's a parabola. And it would fail the horizontal line test, right? If I draw a horizontal line, it crosses twice. So it's a function, but it's not one to one. And the reason it fails is there are y values. Let's do, I don't know, 4. And it has more than 1x, right? So if I want f of 4, or sorry, f of x equal to 4, it could be 2, right? 2 squared is 4. But negative 2 would also give me an output of 4. And so that's why it's not 1 to 1. Um, the y value of 4 has more than one x value, not exactly 1. So that makes it not 1 to 1. Let's check out x cubed. We've seen the graph before, right? If I draw horizontal lines, does it ever cross more than once? Nope. So this one would pass the horizontal line test, so this one would be 1 to 1. And so one to one will have some special features in a little bit, but we're just going to practice identifying one to one. Um, we can also find one to one without a graph. because Sometimes we don't want to draw a graph or sometimes we just don't have a graph. Um, so here's the really formal definition. Um, a function is one to one if and only if f of x one equals f of x two. Essentially, the y values are the same. So basically, if the y values are the same, then the x values are also the same. x1 equals x2, right? In the one that was not 1 to 1, we had different x values. But if it is 1 to 1, if the y's are the same, then the x's are the same. It's a very formal math definition. It's going to get us to do maybe our first math proof of the semester. So we'll prove this by showing that if the outputs are the same, so we're going to start by assuming the y values are the same, and we're going to prove that the x values are also the same. So this will feel weird because most of us maybe haven't done really mathy proofs yet. Um, it's like we're doing math without any numbers. So let's show that 1 over x plus 1 is 1 to 1. So we're going to start with the assumption that the outputs are the same. So we're going to assume f of x1, that's an output, equals another output, f of x2. Meaning 1 over x plus 1, uh, x1 plus 1 equals 1 over x2 plus 1. So we're, base, we're saying the output is the same right now. And if the output is the same, the x's need to also be the same. Um, this will not work if it's not 1 to 1. So we're going to solve this and hope we can prove the x values are the same. So I'm going to cross multiply, so x2 plus 1 equals x1 plus 1, and just solve it whatever algebra works, so minus 1, and x2 equals x1. So we proved the x values are the same, and it's a really abstract math proof, but we did it. And so this tells us that f of x is 1 to 1. And you can always check with a graph, but this is like our first formal math proof. It takes some time to get used to these mathy proofs, right? It's math with no numbers. Um, it turns out that the opposite 
showing not one-to-one, -one, um, it's a little bit easier to find this thing called a counterexample. So a counterexample is basically something that disproves it. So in this case, um, a counterexample would be find two x values with the same y values. So if we, we're going to have two y values the same, so f of x sub 1 equals f of x 2, but that second half of the statement is no longer true. So we're going to disprove it by just finding examples. Uh, so I'm just going to guess and check. So let's just pick some numbers. Um, there's no nice answer to this, so just plug in. Um, I'm just going to plug in a bunch of numbers because I don't know when it's going to work. Um, but go ahead and start plugging those in. So we're going to do negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3 plus 1. Right, so go ahead and plug those in and then come back to the video. Um, if you're with me, I'm going to do a little fast, but what do we get? We get 9 minus 6 plus 1. What's that, 4? 9 minus 6 is 3 plus 1. And then we just keep repeating. Plug in some numbers. I think for negative two, I got, I already did this, but now I lost my numbers. Um, what do we get? Four minus four, we get one. Um, negative one, I got zero. Um, zero, I get one. And it looks like I already found a counter example, so I technically can stop. But I'm gonna keep going because I wanna show you that there's more than one counter example. So there's lots of counterexamples. There's no one right answer. Um, I think if I plug in 1, I get 1 plus 2 plus 1, I get 4. And then if you go to 2, I got 9. So the 4s are also counterexamples. So what do I mean by this? So what I'm saying is f of negative 2 equals f of 0, right? Because they're both 2, or they're both 1, sorry. But the x values are not the same. So... The, the y value of 1 has more than one x value. So that is a counterexample. If you chose the 4, f of negative 3 equals f of 1, but negative 3 doesn't equal 1, right? That is also a counterexample. So there's lots of counterexamples. You just are basically finding an example to prove that it's no longer true. Um, so it's a little bit guess and check to find those numbers. And there's even more if you, found, if you plug in more x's. But these, these are proving that it's not one-to-one -one because I found two x values with the same y value. So not one-to-one. -one. Cool. So in the next video, we'll talk about why we want one-to-one -one and how we'll find those inverse functions.